Hi everyone, BriefChem has just released version 5.6.2 and in this video we'll review some of the new features. One of the main new features that we've added was the ability in the research module to track a person across cameras using face recognition. The new Unique Visitors Analytics Dashboard, which you see here, shows you some of the KPIs that you can quantify using this new feature. You can see the number of unique visitors, and here we count the number of distinct visitors according to face in a store without having to count the same identity twice. We count people as they enter the store with a high quality face recognition camera. And you can see here new visitors and returning visitors. Returning visitors are considered returning if their face appeared in the last few days. Note that there's no need to enroll these visitors in a watch list. You can see here the average time that people stay in a store and the average visit duration is calculated using the time difference between the last and the first appearance of a specific individual and again based on face recognition. Here we have the number of appearances KPI and this is the total number of people that were counted even if we don't see their faces or correlate them to identities. We see here the bounce rate, and this is the percentage of visitors to a particular store who exited the store after a short time. Bounced visitors on this dashboard are visitors whose duration is shorter than one minute, which you can see here. And this you can configure easily by using this slider here. And we can also exclude employees from the general visitors count. And this dashboard already excludes employees who were pre-enrolled to a watch list. We've also added here a count of the employees that appeared throughout the day. Now remember, this feature will work with videos that are of face recognition quality and if the people are not wearing masks. In order to use this feature, all of the relevant camera sources need to be added to the same source group. And this is done in the New Source Groups tab. Now you can use this tab to group sources for other purposes as well. If you want to use the source group for unique identities, then when you define the source group, you'll select this checkbox here, Enable Face Matching for this group. And this screen displays the watch list that you have permissions to use. And if you want a group to be correlated with any of these watch lists, you select them here. And I want to show you one more enhancement that we've made in the research module. Face mask detection is now also available in the research module. So now in addition to using face mask detection in the review module, you can now quantify the people with or without a face mask in the research module as well. And in the proximity analysis dashboard, which we have renamed to COVID-19 insights, we now include this chart here where you can see face mask trends. Now let's move on to the review module. We've significantly improved the appearance similarity filter and we also improved the license plate recognition filter. So in addition to being able to search for license plates that are on the watch list, you can also now search for vehicles that are not on the watch list by clicking the exclude mode. This is similar to the feature that already exists in face recognition. The exclude option for license plates is also available in the respond module. So you can now generate respond alerts when a license plate that appears in a video is not on the watch list. For example, if a non-employee car appears on the company parking lot. In the respond module, Rules defined with the face recognition filters exclude mode can now also be set to trigger smart alerts for persons whose face was not captured, like if a person is hiding their face, or if the image quality is insufficient for face recognition. The administrator can set the no face option for you. Now when you define a rule with the face recognition filter and you selected a watch list, the alerts will now display the match score. So here you see confidence level. So this is a score between zero and 100% and it indicates the match confidence between the two faces. 
If you get a match with a low confidence level, you should consider the match with caution and also look at other comparison instances since there's a higher chance that this is a false match. Now let's head over to the user settings and you'll see that we've changed the name of the person information tab to data protection. You can also see that the user interface is now also translated into Ukrainian. Now let's have a look at the accuracy and performance improvements. We now have partial visual assets generation. This means that by default only the minimal visual assets are generated when we process videos in the respondent research modules. So for example, close-up clips are not generated. And this can increase the real-time processing capacity by 15% and also save disk space. Just remember that when you add a source to the review module that was already processed in one of the other modules, the source will now be reprocessed unlike in past versions. And keep in mind that the administrator can change it so that all visual assets are generated. And we've also improved the accuracy of the face mask detection and the performance of the license plate recognition. Now in terms of VMS integrations, for Milestone 2020 R1, you can now use Milestone's permissions model to indicate which users are allowed to access BriefCam's embedded Milestone client. And for Variant, we've now added additional data that can be sent in the alert to the VMS. And this allows for better decision making when connecting to command and control systems. An additional enhancement to BriefCam is that we've added a filtering service and this increases scalability. Now BriefCam's ability to support and handle large scale deployments has been enhanced. So as of version 5.6.2, the general availability version, BriefCam can optionally work with MongoDB, which is a document-oriented NoSQL database, and this will improve the performance and scalability in large-scale deployments. BriefCam can also now work with RabbitMQ, and this will enhance BriefCam's task queue management. And these two new enhancements are added to BriefCam's support of clustering multiple database instances for scalability and survivability, and also BriefCam's support of load balancers for high-scale systems. And for additional information about working with large-scale deployments, please contact BriefCam support. So now let's go ahead and recap what we've covered. BriefCam's added the ability in research to track a person across cameras using the face recognition functionality. And we've added the new unique visitors analytics dashboard to illustrate the new functionality. We've also added the source groups tab to support this feature. Now to help with the fight against COVID-19, we've extended the capabilities of our face mask detection by adding it to the research module. We talked about the enhancement of the appearance similarity and that we've added an exclude option to the LPR filter as well as a match score when comparing a face to a watch list. BriefCam also added partial visual assets generation, giving you increased throughput and less consumption of disk space. And we've significantly enhanced the ability to support and handle large-scale deployments. And that sums it up. So for more information, please refer to the release notes and the BriefCam manuals. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.